great standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to their works by the, by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And, they, and then they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Be seated. And please pass those attendance cards to the inside aisle at this time. We are glad to have our guests with us. We appreciate you so very much. I need to say something. The thank yous go to you. The glory goes to God. Uh, I was part of the 90% and not the 10% that failed. But the thank yous all go to you. And I appreciate each and every one of you. At the moment, you all sound like Mickey Mouse, which is kind of funny. So if I smile when you talk to me, it's because it's kind of funny to uh, hear Mickey Mouse talking to me all the time. Uh, but uh, one to three months is uh, how long it will take my brain to readjust to this new way of hearing, and eventually I will hear normal. So it is amazing. Uh, did you know that when you turn on your turn signals, there's a sound that comes from that? I now know there's a sound that comes from that. So uh, it's kind of interesting to discover all these new sounds, and uh, I am so appreciative of everybody here. We are continuing our blueprint of the church, does it really matter, sermon series. The question today is, will God send good people to hell? Now, for those who are new, uh, this is actually a sermon series based on a sermon I did back on January the 8th. I was asked to uh, contact a young man in Fort Worth who had left the church and had joined a denominational church. And his mother had asked me to contact him. That lesson on January 8th created six more people to want to study with me. I call them the seven, the six plus the original one. And I owe a great big thank you to the seven for allowing me to share with you the study that I'm doing with them. Today's lesson, it's been the longest and certainly the toughest with the seven. Will God send good people to hell? All seven in one way or another have said it just isn't fair. You know, using human reasoning, just using human reasoning. Human reasoning says it's not fair. These are good people we're talking about. We're not talking about horrible people. We're not talking about murderers, bank robbers, drug dealers. We're talking about good people. And they say it just isn't fair to think that they would not have heaven. Guess what, folks? There's a small part of us that wants to agree with the seven. Now, why would I say that? I say that for two reasons. Based on the things we say and based on the things we fail to do. I have lost count of the number of people When I've been to funerals, visitation, funeral services, Sun Wu will say, well, don't worry. They'll be talking to the the family that's left behind. Don't worry. You know, you're going to see your departed loved one in heaven. You know, isn't it wonderful to know that your loved one is right now in the arms of Jesus? Isn't that comforting? But then... I look at the life of that person who died. They never were baptized. Or if they were baptized, they were baptized unscripturally. 
And if they were baptized scripturally, they had lived, to everyone's knowledge, a life that was unfaithful. So how? How can we say that? Because I hear it. I hear it even from even a few preachers that have preached a few sermons, and I'm sitting there thinking, that's not in my Bible. And then the things we fail to do. Remember last year we talked about the five? We talked about your five? Your five that, that are unfaithful Christians that you want to reach? We have right now a great tool called Christianity 101. And Billy has done an awesome job at presenting the gospel. Have you asked your five to watch? Or have you failed to ask your five to watch? You see, Christianity 101 is not for you and me. It's for people It's for your five who need to know what they need to do to become a Christian. Do we fail? Remember that song, you never mention him to me? When we stand in the better land, wouldn't it be so sad to hear? You never mention him to me. Why do we fail? Or why do we say what we say, even though we know that, according to the Bible, heaven is not their destination? Do we think, well, maybe, maybe there's a loophole. You know, sometimes we talk about loopholes. You know, maybe there's a loophole, and maybe that good person will kind of get through the loophole. As we go into this lesson, the first step I must do is I must lovingly correct the question. This question actually came from two of the seven. They got the question wrong. God does not send people to hell. He doesn't. God is not like some trooper standing on the side of the road trying to camouflage, hoping to catch somebody doing wrong. God loves you. He does not want you to spend eternity in hell. So what's wrong with it? It should be rephrased. People who go to hell do so because they fail to faithfully obey. Failing to faithfully obey sends a person to hell. Who is responsible for that? It's that person. Now, we are responsible for sharing the gospel. That's our responsibility. But their decision is entirely up to them. They can either obey or they can fail to obey. But I understand the two people of the seven who phrased it like that. So for this lesson, I'm going to go ahead with their phrasing because I understand what they're intending. They intend to imply that God would not let good people end up in hell. Let's look at the two people. Mary Doe, I call her Mary Doe number three. She said, my mama was never baptized, and I know she's in heaven. Guess what? You have someone in your family. You have someone in your circle of friends who is just a good person. I mean good down to the core. And you think, would they actually spend eternity in hell? For me, it would be my grandmother. The only grandparent I had when I was born. She was 80 when I was born. She died on my 16th birthday. She died when she was 96. She was a good person. A little bit different, yes. Okay, a little bit different, but she was a good person. She actually started two congregations. Let me back up a little bit. She started two congregations of a denominational faith. One when she was living in the country, then when she moved to the city, she started one in the city. She was the backbone of those two churches. She was a good person. 
do I expect to see my grandmother, my grandmother doll in heaven? No, I don't. Now, I'm going to have more to say about Mary Doe here in a few moments, so hang on. John Doe, number two, he said it like this. Growing up, the preachers we had talked about baptism all the time. Amen. But there's a lot of good people who have never been baptized. Would God send them, good people, to hell? You know, the Bible has examples of good people. Let's look at Acts chapter 10. This is a man named Cornelius, verse 1, chapter 10. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion in what was called the Italian regiment. Notice how Luke describes him. A devout man. He was devout. He was good to the core, a devout man, and one who feared God, respected God, the one true God. With all his household, he was even teaching his household the truth about God, who gave, well, this man was generous, who gave alms generously to the people. And furthermore, he prayed to God, not occasionally, not sometimes, he prayed to God always. Let's go to another example. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. I call these people the Lord Lord people. That was my terminology I used for them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he, he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Were those people bad people? No. Were they drug dealers? No. Were they the, the scorn of the earth? No. These were all good people, but they had failed to obey. Folks, I want to tell you something. We just called Cornelius good, and we called these people at Matthew 7 good, but guess what? They're really not. Here's a fact. People are, by their very nature, are not really good. Why do I say that? Because we have to compare ourselves to the standard. Well, who's the standard? That's God. And when you walk up and compare yourself to God, you fail miserably. You see, here's another fact. You don't have to teach people to be selfish. You don't have to teach people to be impatient. You don't have to teach people to be rude. You don't have to teach people to be self-serving. It's part of our DNA. Just look at any baby, okay? Babies want what they want, selfish. Babies are not very patient. I want it now. And they'll cry loudly for it. Babies can be a little rude, and babies are certainly self-serving. It's part of our DNA. We are not really good people. Only God is good. Only God is good. And see, when you talk about God, you got to talk about heaven. And heaven is a perfect place by design. So sinful man... Sinful man cannot be there. Mankind must do something in order to be able to live in heaven. Mankind must seek forgiveness and then live in faithful obedience to him. But the seven, I think this is the reason why this study with them went so long. The seven would say, but Michael, God is a loving God. Amen. He is a loving God. But He's also a God of justice. 
He's going to do what is right always. You see, while God is a loving God, there are some things He hates. Turn your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 6. Here's a basic rule. God hates anything that hurts His children. He does. God hates anything that hurts His children. Let's read Proverbs chapter 6, beginning in verse 16. Here the writer gives a list of some of the things that God hates. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to Him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Now, imagine for just a moment, imagine with me that you're in heaven, and you're there for all eternity, and you're living next to a group of liars. A group of people that are killers, shed innocent blood. You're living next to a group of people that are always thinking of evil, wicked plans. You're living next to people who are what? False witnesses. Would that make heaven a place you want to be? Would that make you happy? I have a friend who's um, lived, he lives in a, a subdivision and next door, uh, a, a man bought the house next door to him. And in his words, that man is crazy. <laughs> He's just simply crazy. The city, he built actually, he, he built a cemetery in his front yard. The city made him move it. <laughs> but he built it in his front yard. That's one example of some of the crazy things that he has done. My friend doesn't enjoy living next door to him. Would you enjoy living next door to any of the people of Proverbs 6? You see, God's not going to let that happen. God loves you too much. For God to be the God who protects his children, he must separate evil from obedience at the judgment. Hell is a real place. I want you to listen to Jesus here. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, verse 43. If your hand causes you to sin, what do you need to do? Cut it off. What? Let me back up on that. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands to go to hell and to the fire that never shall be quenched. What is Jesus saying right here? He's saying hell is bad. Hell is bad. And you don't want to be there at all. The passage that Thomas read from Revelation Hell is a horrible place filled with horrible people. You don't want to spend eternity there. Even the hating world in preparation for heaven and hell is no picnic on the torment side. Uh, go with me to Luke, Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter 16, verse 23. And being in torments in Hades, the hating world, he's on the bad side. He lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then this rich man cries out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. I have been thirsty in my life. I remember one time we were pretty good distance from the house and for some reason I forgot my water jug 
it was there. Mom had prepared it. I forgot to grab it. And I'm off several miles from the house with no water. By the time that day was over, I was so thirsty. I can't even imagine being so much in torment that you just want just a, a drop. Just give me a drop. A, a drop to cool me down. That's how bad. That's how bad even the Hadian world. And hey, that's just a foretaste of hell. If we accept what the Bible says, then we cannot merit heaven. We've already talked about those lessons. Those lessons are the ones that we just completed. We can't be good enough to inherit heaven. It's only because of God's grace that He's given us a plan where we can be part of heaven. Let's go back to Mary, Mary Doe number three. Her statement hit home because I thought about my grandmother. She said, once again, my mama was never baptized and I know she's in heaven. Let me tell you exactly what I told her. Quoting, once a person dies, his or her fate, eternal fate, is sealed. Nothing we do here on earth or do not do, will change their eternal fate. The greatest testimony anyone can give to a departed loved one is to once he or she understands what is needed to be done, they understand God's plan of salvation, then they faithfully obey. That demonstrates the type of person the loved one impacted. Then I added to Mary Doe number three, the reason that statement is also true, it's a discredit to not obey when one understands what he or she needs to do. You know, really, to me, the question, even though it is phrased wrong, the question should not be, why do people go to hell? The question should be, why does anyone go to heaven? Because I know the person I am. I know the person that I have been in the past. And I suspect I kind of know the person you are. An illustration I've used many times, and I want to use it one more time. My mother never had a dryer. My mother never had a modern washing machine. She had a, a, one of those ringers, you know, you would wring the clothes out after you wash the clothes. And my mother would put all her laundry on the clothesline. Well, back then, young people, believe it or not, we only got the weather report at night, okay? You went and watched the 10 o'clock news to know what the weather is going to be the next day. And weather can change pretty rapidly. One Saturday, Mom had washed all the, the bed linens. We had white bed linens. And she had hung those white bed linens out there on the clothesline. And we departed to go to town to get some things we needed in town. During that time, a cold front swept down and it suddenly started snowing unexpectedly for us. When we finally got home, the ground was just covered by about two inches of snow. And I looked at that clothesline. And my mother, I mean, my mother was the utopia homemaker. You could have eaten off our floors because she mopped, she swept, she dusted every day of her life as an adult. And those perfectly clean bed linens looked so Dirty in contrast to the snow. In contrast to God's given snow, those bed linens look so dirty. Now I say that for a reason. Here's the reason. Because of His love, God has given us a way to be truly clean of sin. Because see, we can't clean ourselves. You know, like those bed linens, you know, they're really not that clean. 
compared to God's definition of clean. God wants us to obey Him. God wants us to be prepared for that day that we leave this earth. He wants us to be prepared so that when we leave this world and go to the hating world and eventually go to heaven with Him, He wants us to be in heaven. One more verse, and then the lesson is yours. Isaiah chapter 53, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him. God the Father laid on him, Jesus, God the Son, the iniquity of us all. The only way you can be clean, really clean, is through the blood of Jesus, our Lord. That's the only way. Will you become a Christian today? Will you take those steps to be a Christian today? As a Christian, isn't it wonderful that God has given us the ability to seek forgiveness? If we'll just seek it. 1 John 1, 9, the church stands ready to pray with you and for you. James 5, 16. If you have any need to respond, we pray that you'll do so as we stand and sing for your encouragement. And you are